Imagine a soldier standing alone on a dusty rooftop. The only sound is the wind. Then, a faint buzz. A small, dark shape zips across the sky. It's a drone, and it's heading straight for a crowded street below. He raises a rifle. There's no loud bang, just a soft click. The drone stops dead in the air and falls to the ground, harmless. This is real. This is happening right now. And this rifle is changing everything about how wars are fought. Welcome to War Tech Zone. For years, big armies worried about big things. Jets, tanks, missiles. But the greatest danger today is often the smallest. A drone you can buy online can be a flying bomb, a spy camera, or a tool to guide other weapons. They are cheap, they are everywhere, and they are very, very hard to stop. Think about it. How do you shoot down something that flies like a bird, hides behind buildings, and costs less than a used car? Your average anti-aircraft gun is built for a fast jet, not a small plastic drone. It's like trying to swat a mosquito with a sledgehammer. You'll probably miss, and you'll cause a lot of damage trying. This was a huge problem, and Israel, a country that has faced constant threats from all sides, needed a new answer. They couldn't just build bigger walls or taller radars. The threat was coming in low and slow, under the radar. They needed something smart, fast, and flexible. So, they built a rifle, not a giant cannon, a rifle one person can carry and use. This was the start of a quiet revolution in air defense. Let's break down exactly how this works, because it's simpler than you might think, but smarter than anything before it. The first job is to see the drone. In a busy sky with birds, clouds, and other things, how do you pick out the threat? The rifle has special eyes. It uses a thermal camera, which sees heat. A drone's motor and electronics get warm, so it shows up as a bright spot against a cooler sky, even in the dark. It also has a high-powered zoom camera. An operator can see a drone from very far away, long before anyone on the ground could hear or see it with their own eyes. These two cameras work together to give a clear picture. It's like having super-powered binoculars built right into the weapon. But seeing it isn't enough. You have to hit it. A drone can dart left, right, up, down. It's a tiny, fast-moving target. A human alone would have a very hard time leading the target and making the shot, especially if the wind is blowing. This is where the real magic happens. The rifle is connected to a small computer. The moment the soldier spots the drone and puts a digital marker on it, the computer takes over. It locks on. It starts tracking the drone's every move, calculating its speed, its path, and even how the wind will affect a shot. All of this happens in a fraction of a second, constantly updating. The soldier looks through a screen. They see a box around the drone, following it perfectly. The computer then shows them where to aim. It's not aiming directly at the drone, but at where the drone will be when the shot arrives. The system does all the hard math. The soldier just keeps the reticle on the moving box and pulls the trigger. The rifle sends out its countermeasure. This could be a precise radio signal that jams the drone's controls, or in some versions, a small, accurate projectile. The drone is neutralized. The whole fight, from buzz to crash, might take 10 seconds. This changes the game for the soldier on the ground. Before, if a drone appeared, a soldier could only duck for cover and call for help, hoping a large, expensive air defense system miles away could respond in time. Now, the soldier is the help. They have the power to control the air right above them. This is a huge shift in thinking. It's called distributed defense. Instead of one big valuable shield protecting a whole area, you have many small shields, each carried by a person. Let's talk about why this idea is so powerful. First, it's portable. You can drive it in a Jeep, 
carry it up a staircase, or fit it on a small boat. It can go anywhere troops go. It can protect a special forces team on a secret mission, guard a temporary base in a city, or watch over a busy marketplace in a city. You can't do that with a missile battery that needs three trucks to move it. Second, it's fast. There's no setup time. See a threat, raise the rifle, and gauge. This speed is critical against drones, which can come in, drop a small bomb, and be gone in under a minute. The rifle turns minutes into seconds. Third, it's precise. In a city full of innocent people, you can't just blast away with a large cannon. You need a surgical tool. This rifle allows a soldier to take out just the drone with minimal risk to anyone else. This precision saves lives and is a major reason this technology is so important for modern warfare. Fourth, it's a deterrent. If an enemy knows that every soldier in a unit might have the power to knock their expensive drone out of the sky, they will think twice before sending it. It makes their cheap, effective weapon much less effective. Now, Israel didn't just build this rifle and stop. They made it part of a bigger team. The rifle is like one player on a soccer team. Other players include big radar systems that can see for hundreds of miles. They include powerful electronic jammers that can create a bubble of silence, blocking all drone signals over a large base. They even include newer systems that use lasers to burn drones out of the sky. The rifle fits right into this team. A soldier on a rooftop with his rifle might get targeting data sent to his screen from a big radar far away. Hey, there's something coming from the north. He looks and finds it faster. Or, after he takes a shot, the data from his rifle, what he saw, where the drone was, gets sent back to headquarters. This helps everyone else understand the enemy's tactics. It makes the whole team smarter. This network turns individual soldiers into sensors and defenders, all connected. It creates a web of protection that is very hard for any drone to get through. Of course, a tool is only as good as the person using it. You can't just hand this to someone and expect them to be an expert. The training is intense. Soldiers spend hours in simulators. They practice against screens showing dozens of drones flying in crazy patterns, in rain, in fog, in bright sun. They learn to trust the computer's lock. They practice until raising the rifle, finding the target, and making the decision to fire is a smooth, quick action. They train for the stress, for the moment when it's not a simulation and real lives depend on their speed and accuracy. This combination, the advanced technology and the highly trained soldier, creates a new kind of defense. It's reliable, it's adaptable, and it works. We've seen it work. In recent conflicts, drones have been a constant threat. Reports from units equipped with these rifles tell a clear story. The threat drops dramatically. Soldiers feel safer. Critical locations like field hospitals or command posts become much harder targets for these flying menaces. The presence of these rifles changes the battlefield. The success of this system in Israel has not gone unnoticed. Armies around the world are watching. The United States, the United Kingdom, countries in Europe and Asia, they are all buying or developing similar systems. The problem of small drones is a global one. From battlefields to airports to major public events, everyone now needs a way to deal with it. The rifle has shown that the solution doesn't always have to be bigger and more expensive. Sometimes the best answer is smarter, smaller, and put directly into the hands of the person on the front line. So what comes next? The technology is already evolving. The next step is more artificial intelligence. Imagine a rifle that can automatically scan the sky 24-7, identify a threat and alert the soldier before they even hear it. The AI could track multiple drones at once, helping a single soldier deal with a whole swarm. We're also seeing the beginning of directed energy weapons, lasers. These would be the ultimate precision tool, hitting a drone at the speed of light with no sound and no bullet to fall back to Earth. Israel and other countries are testing portable laser systems that could work on the same principle as the rifle, but with a limitless ammunition supply as long as there is power. And the rifles themselves will get lighter, with longer battery life and even better connectivity to other military systems. The story of this anti-drone rifle is really a story about adapting to change. The battlefield changed when drones became weapons. The old ways didn't work anymore, so a new way was invented. 
it's a story that proves a powerful point. In today's world, the most important advantage isn't always size or raw power. It's often speed, intelligence, and the ability to give a single person the right tool to solve a big problem. It puts control back into the hands of the individual soldier. It turns a person from a potential target into a powerful defender. It reshapes the space around them, making it a zone of safety. That is a profound shift. It means security can be mobile, it can be precise, and it can be everywhere it needs to be instantly. For us, watching from the outside, it's a clear lesson in innovation. When faced with a new and difficult challenge, the best solutions are often simple in concept but brilliant in execution. They empower people. They change the rules. This rifle did exactly that. It looked at a problem that seemed too small for big systems and too big for small units, and it found a perfect answer in between. The age of the drone is here, but now, so is the age of the drone hunter, and it all fits on a soldier's shoulder. If you found this look into the future of defense fascinating, make sure you are part of the Wartech Zone community. Your support helps us bring you these deep dives, so hit that like button right now, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Let us know in the comments below, what other piece of soldier-carried technology do you think could change modern warfare? Thank you for watching.